Kelp is found all along the coast of the UK. This unassuming macroalgae is not only surprisingly beautiful and diverse, but can also lock up carbon, provide nurseries for fish and other marine life, and provide a buffer against coastal flooding. Sadly, kelp is in decline. There are several theories for this loss, including climate change, extreme weather, and damage by fishing trawlers. I took a trip to a stretch of Sussex coastline that has been particularly hard hit. The kelp reduced to a fraction of what historically was here. However, the hopefully good news is that a new law that came in earlier this year has banned trawling in the area. And now a University of Sussex team are undergoing a pioneering project to see how healthy the kelp is here and the species living within and around it. The question now is, can kelp recover? You don't get this opportunity very often. We're talking about 300 square kilometres where you've removed a particular potential um, uh, stressor, if you want to call it. And so this is really to prove that that was causing the trouble in the first place. So what you need to do is you need to get data. We've got many, many opinions as to why the kelp has disappeared, hasn't come back. But without really just looking at removing that stress and seeing what happens, we, we won't know. Mika Peck and his team at the University of Sussex are trying a variety of low-cost techniques to monitor the kelp and will capture data every July until the trawling ban expires. I mean, the dream is basically to come back to a, a healthy ecosystem. So a typical day, we'd identify our transects using GPS, so we can always find the same site next year. We'd uh, deploy the brubs, the baited remote underwater videos, chuck them in. We'd make sure they run for at least an hour. We're also recording passive acoustics. So that provides an idea of the soundscape. And hopefully that changes as recovery changes, as more species come and make more sort of aquatic noise. From this, we can extract environmental indices. We can create indices of the state of the environment as it is now. And this is kind of a degraded environment, to be honest, you know, to a certain degree, or is considered that. Um, and we'll be able to watch the recoveries, our hope, as the system uh, regenerates through time. And it's important because if you can prove that, it means the bylaw will last more than five years. Theoretically, it's only five years. So we need to have the science behind us to say, well, this is making a difference. It is the trawling that's doing it. Along with capturing video below the waves, the team are also capturing environmental DNA samples. I describe eDNA as being like fingerprints in the sea. So you know when we touch something, you leave DNA in a fingerprint and you can use that to trace people. So animals are giving off like fingerprints all the time, shedding DNA through feces, mucus, skin cells, scales, etc. Um, and so the water becomes like a sort of soup of genetic material of all of the species that are in and around it. And we can capture it just by pushing that water through a simple filter like this one. Um, and the DNA gets stuck inside the filter. Um, and then we can literally just send this to the lab. So we don't have to send litres of water to the laboratory, literally just the filter. And it's easy enough that anybody can do that. The results of the eDNA survey should yield a baseline to see if biodiversity grows along with kelp's return. I'm very optimistic. I mean, even now, during COVID, there was some reduction in fisheries and um, some of the anecdotal evidence and some of the, the diving already in some of the sites here has shown quite interesting regeneration already. E effectively, we've, on, on our doorsteps, we've got you know, a potential for a regenerating a beautiful biodiverse environment, as, as interesting in itself as, as the tropical rainforest systems that everyone focuses on far away. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people don't get to see it because it's a little bit cold to dive here, but um, yeah, buy a dry suit. <laughs>